Okay. So hello everyone. Uh, my name is Samantha Harlow and I'm the online learning librarian for UNCG Libraries. The University Teaching and Learning Center, the UTLC, and UNCG Libraries collaborated on creating a series of webinars for the UNCG community on online learning and innovation. This is the eighth webinar in the series, and welcome. In this series, different UNCG instructional technology consultants, ITCs, ITS staff, faculty, and librarians will cover topics on online learning pedagogies, UNCG instructional technology tools such as Canvas, Google, Box, et cetera, and more. These are 30-minute webinars and are recorded and placed on um, a LibGuide or a web page, which I'm going to throw into the chat for you guys to have. So um, we also give the recording to the people who presented it as well so they can use it um, on their own tutorials. So let me just quickly cover some logistical things. So please mute your audio during the presentation by clicking the audio icon next to your name to turn it red. But feel free to turn your audio back on by clicking the audio icon again at the end of the webinar to participate in a conversation with the presenters. If you do not have a microphone, you are welcome to participate in the chat. If you have questions throughout the webinar, please put them in chat and I'll track the questions in chat. So I am hosting and running the webinar today. So if you have any issues, you can put them in chat. Hopefully I can try to kind of multitask um, and we'll try our best to get things done. So today the session is on streaming media, um, down by me, so um, I'm going to get started. So are there any questions before I start presenting on here? And like I said, just let me know if you can't see the Google slide here as well. Okay, so I'm going to get started. So like I said, today's session is on um, streaming media and UNCG libraries. Um, so we're going to talk about streaming media as a whole, talk about library resources and how to find streaming media and um, different tools around campus in terms of streaming media. So there's a lot to cover in a short amount of time. So um, to get started, I already introduced myself, but in case you came in late, I am the online learning librarian, Sam Harlow. Um, and we also have a lot of um, liaison librarians which I'll cover that can help you um, in a more subject specific way. So um, the first thing is I just want to make sure we're all on the same page about what is streaming. Um, so streaming media is the method used to deliver multimedia elements, usually video or audio, from a data streaming service provider to an end user. So when I mean, say streaming, I mean, you know, that it streams through the Internet. So you need an Internet connection, and a lot of times they're streamed through a provider, either, you know, through these library resources we'll cover or something like YouTube, Vimeo, TED Talks, um, Pandora is an example of audio, you know, Audible uses streaming functionality, and many more. So again, I just wanted to make sure we were all on the same page. Of course, you can make videos on your own and then use these streaming resources um, to, you know, provide video to your students or to other instructors. So, um, of course, there are many challenges that come with using streaming media, um, which, you know, kind of come with also making media. So the time it takes to either find the streaming made media, learn how to use the media, um, as also if you're choosing to make your own videos, the time it takes to make them, which is similar to technology. You have to learn how to use the different providers. If you're making your own video, you're learning how to make them, learning how to upload them, learning how to make them accessible, which that is time consuming. It can be hard. Um, money means that, you know, a lot of times streaming resources cost money. So today we're going to cover a lot of, you know, large streaming resources that the library pays for. But um, if you're trying to provide one streaming film for a class, that costs a lot of money because you have to buy streaming rights through a distributor, which we'll cover a little bit. So there's also the issue of permanence, and there's two issues with permanence. One is, like, if you're using something like YouTube, something can be taken down. Uh, due to copyright issues, due to maybe the author changed their mind about making it available. So that causes issues of that, you know, of permanence so that it disappears. Another issue of permanence is that when you create your own video or if you're using another video, when something gets out of date, it's a lot harder to edit a video than it is um, to edit other things in an online course. So that can be really time consuming as well. 
Um, the other issue is accessibility, and with video, we're typically talking talking about closed captioning. So um, YouTube does provide some closed captioning sometimes, but not all the time. And the library, we do try to you know only buy stuff that comes with closed captioning, but a lot of times you have to pay attention to like if you're using the right version, if it has the captioning or not. If you're making your own video, having to add in the captioning either through YouTube or another method is very time consuming. And the last thing is copyright and screening rights. So, um, of course, not everything on YouTube or Vimeo is copyright. Just because it's online doesn't mean it is, you know, doesn't have issues of legality. And then screening rights are that sometimes, you know, you can find a film streaming, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you can use it in an online course. Um, so we'll, we can have, try to talk about that at the end if we have time. But, um, again, there's a lot of different issues. So. Ideally today we're going to cover the library resources and cover some tips and tricks um, that the library can help you with um, in terms of trying to fight against these challenges. So why should you care? So why would you want to use streaming media in a course now that I've talked about all these issues? So again, because this is a short webinar, I'm not going to harp on this for too long, but this is um, some links, and I will provide a link to this presentation at the end of the webinar. But the first one is a link um, to some stuff about the pedagogical benefits of using video in education so that students can sometimes learn better with visual engagement. And I'm sure a lot of you have heard of um, UDL, or Universal Design for Learning, and that it's always helpful to provide many different forms of media in a course, um, not just textual, not just visual, et cetera, for the different kind of learners. This link does a quick little study. So a study that was done on an online course with video um, versus the same course that did not use video, and they found that the students had a higher participation rate in the course with video. I will note that there was no difference in grades. <laughs> um, it's not like the students with the video did better on the grades, but they did have a higher rate of participation, which I think can be great. Um, to think about in terms of an online course especially. And then also, you know, active learning, again, I'm sure we all know kind of about that, but a lot of active learning studies have shown that students feel more engaged with visual media. Excuse me, I had a sneeze. Yeah. Okay. So, um, now to get to the kind of meat of the webinars, where where can you find reliable streaming resources? So, of course, what I'm mostly going to talk about today is library stuff. So we do have this guide, which I'm going to go over in a second, that deals with a lot of stuff to do with streaming films. So this guide mostly deals with um, streaming resources that we pay for through the library. And what I mean by that is, you know, we as a library pay for subscri pay subscription fees to these streaming resources to provide you and your students these things for no cost so that you don't have to go out and buy or your department doesn't going to have to go out and buy distributing rights to get something streaming. So a lot of times you'll, like, you'll have instructors say, oh, I see that you have the DVD of a film, but that doesn't mean that we have the streaming rights of a film. If you find a DVD or you know of a film that you want to use and we don't have it in our streaming resources, we can always contact the distributor and see if we can purchase streaming rights. But that can be really costly. It typically costs hundreds of dollars. We typically don't get the streaming rights for more than a year or three years top. And um, so it's like a continuing cost you'll have to pay every one to three years. And because of how expensive it is and because it's kind of a one purchase, a lot of times your department will have to pay for it using department funds. So that's why today I'm going to mostly go over these streaming resources that we have in the library so that you don't have to, by you I mean your department, doesn't have to pay these fees. So um, I'm sure maybe a lot of you have seen it, but if you haven't, here's the streaming guide. It's typically maintained by our e-resources librarian, Kate Hill. Um, so here at the middle, you can see our subscription sources that are the largest. So we do try to update this when we get new ones, but these are the big ones. So um, I don't, you can throw in the chat um, what you want to, um, you know, if you have a certain department, and I can cover maybe what is on here, but for now, these are the big ones that we typically recommend. So academic video online is like social, um, humanities, American history, counseling and therapy, dance. Ambrose has um, films from Ambrose Video Publishing, which has a lot of BBC Shakespeare page. Um, and all this stuff right here. So Digital Campus is our Swank Motion Pictures. So this is a large um, resource that has over 17,000 popular Hollywood type movies from almost every studio except Fox. And then note down here that we do now have Feature Films for Education, which is 20th Century Fox. So we do try to provide as much as possible 
in terms of screening of these kind of more popular Hollywood type films. Um, so always be sure to check these before you, you know, go off and try to purchase it on your own. So digital theater is mostly theater based. We have a lot of documentary resources like DocuSeek, Film Platform. Films on Demand is another large um, humanities and social science one. Um, this has a lot of like kind of interviews with they call celebrated thinkers. Canopy is a, one of the largest distributors of online educational videos, and they're pretty up to date and you know sleek looking. And then Stage Research Methods is a great one for um, videos about different research methods, like such as writing a literature review or qualitative research. So um, these videos get used a lot in our like kind of upper level courses or even courses that you're having them do a pretty big research project that can help your students get started. And I honestly use it myself in terms of uh, my research in terms of looking for different methods in terms of qualitative or quantitative and things like that. So note here we do have a couple of links to free resources, um, but we do have a librarian for every subject, which I'll cover in a little bit, but they, you know, always be sure to contact your librarian in your subject area and they can help you create lists of things as well. So notice here on the top we do have different um, tabs for streaming music, if you're into that. I don't know if anyone's in the music here, you know, in, from the music department or is interested in that, but this tab deals with just our music subscriptions, which is great. This has um, detailed instructions on how to use Swank Digital Campus, um, but if you need help, again, you're welcome. We can kind of go over that if we have time at the end. Um, Non-library resources are some really big free ones that we do have kind of divided out by subject. So again, be sure to kind of look at this if you're interested in free resources kind of beyond YouTube that are a little bit more, you know, academic and education focused. So we do have information about what is public performance rights, you know, the differences between that versus streaming and that kind of thing. But again, you're always welcome to email email us if you have any questions about that. And we do have a tutorial here on how to embed films in your Canvas course. And um, we don't have a lot of time to cover this today, but embed code is that iframe code that you might see in YouTube and beyond, but that allows you to kind of create a little embedded box within Canvas or a website. Um, and a lot of our providers through the library, our subscription services, do have um, embed code where you can have things show up within your Canvas course. So this is kind of... Um, the um, overview. So I did just want to kind of show you how it looks if you go through here. So let's say you want to go and um, use Canopy. Here is what Canopy looks like. So one thing to know is that because we pay, the library pays for these subscription services, we use these things called proxies so that if you are off campus and your students are off campus, you do get access to it, but that we know and that the people who are paying money know that um, not just anyone is using the stuff, that it's a UNCG provider, which means that if you're off campus, you do need to go through our guide or through the library homepage, through the database page or something like that in order to go here. So here you can see I am proxied in because it says uncg.canopy.com. If you're off campus and you're going here, you might get asked to log in with your UNCG email address, um, you know, which that would just be that single sign-on that you see a lot when you're off campus, um, but you would have to use that and your students as well. So once you log in and you're off campus, you can see this. So if you're just interested in browsing something like Canopy, um, here it is. So you can see, you know, they do it by, um, Popular documentary, new to Canopy, start looking a lot like Netflix. They have the Criterion collection on here, which me as a film buff makes me really excited because that's a lot of like really classic films. I mean, look, Children of Paradise, all this great stuff. So world cinema, um, this is like foreign film, women make movies, thought-provoking documentaries, etc. So they do a recommended by you based on your searches of what you've maybe done in the past um, by your cookie history art house favorites, and then you can also search up here um, by category or you can browse by category as well. So notice here that we do have it broken down into arts, media, health, etc. So note that this is Canopy, it's just one of our providers, so if you're using something different it might look different, but a lot of them work in a pretty similar way. So let's say um, I have a little baby, so like let's say I'm interested in using um, this milk, the politics of infant feeding in my course. So you can click on this and you can preview it through Canopy, you can watch it. Um, notice that they are closed captions um, and that you can um, share 
through this link here. Sometimes it might be called link, et cetera, but again, um, um, because we pay for these subscriptions, they do create these things called permalinks, which um, we can talk about a little bit more, but a lot of times you can't necessarily grab the URL from the top. You should go down here and try to find the share link to make sure it will work off campus. Canopy is one of those rare ones that actually the link up here is the same as the one up here because we bought, you know, they proxy it to this UNCG tab. Um, but just to be safe, I always do go through this share tab. Note here that here is the embed code. Um, and you can also create a clip and playlist. So a lot of these resources have a login option, which you'll see here on the right if you're playing with it on your own screen. This is different than, you know, proxying off campus. You can create your own account, which allows you to create a watch list, note your viewing history and that stuff. So you can create a free account just the way you would create like a YouTube account or anything like that. Just provide them your email address. And then once you have it, it allows you to do things like clipping. So like in this one, say I wanted to clip, um, it will ask you to create a playlist. So you go up here and it will tell you, okay, you need a playlist. So like, okay, I'm going to add it to this playlist. You edit it. And then here you can then go into edit again. And then you can um, write a description, title your clip, and have a start time and a stop time. So this can be really useful, you know, if you're teaching synchronously or if you just want to watch the, want them to watch 20 minutes of this an hour and a half documentary about um, you know, the politics of feeding infants. So um, this can be great. And then once you save it, it will create a link for you. So like if I want to start at 10, you know, 14 minutes, you can save your clip. And there it is. And then you can view it here. And then again, this is the link. So again, this will work differently depending on what resource you're using, but a lot of our resources do have this option. So that's kind of like the basics of Canopy um, or using, um, going through these resources that are a guide. Um, so I'm going to go back to here. So we talked about this a little bit, but, you know, permalinks, embed code, and clipping all do work this way. And a lot of times they do provide, allow, uh, you need to create your own login through the provider. Um, if this is something, if you teach online a lot and you're using streaming media a lot, it's not, it's really easy to set up. It took me like five minutes when I did it. And it does provide you these nice things of like creating your own library. Like you can create a library of every film you're using for your class and link to that um, for the whole course um, and, you know, view what you've seen and search history and things like that. So I do recommend trying that depending on what you're trying to do. Um, but again, note that we did mention throughout this, but every um, department has a library liaison. So if you don't know who your liaison is, definitely, you know, chat me or let me know and I'll let you know. But um, they can, you know, work with you one-on-one, -on -one, either through email or through a consultation and um, recommend films to you um, through the library. They can make sure that your permalinks are set up right. You know, what I provide for my, I'm the public health education librarian, as well as the kinesiology librarian, as well as the online learning librarian. So for my instructors, I a lot of times will, you know, go through Canvas with them, make sure the links are set up right, um, test it off campus. Um, it depends on the liaison and how much time they have, but um, it's definitely a service you should take advantage of. We also have research guides by subject if you've never used these, if you want to see, um, you know, different ones. So like for nursing, you could go into here and a lot of times the liaisons will link to streaming resources. So here you can see that, um, you know, Leah recommends, you know, videos of surgical procedures and then there's free videos through Medline Plus. So again, the liaisons will recommend more subject specific streaming resources. Um, so. Now that we kind of covered that stuff, um, let's do a quick search in the library catalog. So you can go through that streaming guide and look and browse in the way I just showed you, but you can also use the library catalog and search by subject. So tomorrow, I'm actually on my way to um, San Antonio. So let's do a search for um, some San Antonio missions, which I plan on seeing while I'm there. So um, right now I'm searching in all in the catalog, which just kind of searches everything. You can also search in our catalog or um, up here, switch it to UNCG University Libraries. But notice here that on the left, under format, it gives you all these different formats. So a lot of times you might have to go into show more. And then notice here on the left, you see this e-video. So if I click on that, 
it then shows me the e-videos we have available about missions and San Antonio. So um, I could then go down and say, hmm, I'm really interested in seeing the historic American cathedrals, and I want my students to see them as well. And you go into here, and if you've used the catalog before, you should, this should start looking familiar. But you can then click on this View Now link, and it will pop you to the streaming provider. So this is a different provider, Films on Demand. It's different than Canopy, but, you know, it has a lot of the same stuff. It's closed caption. It comes with transcripts. You can share. Um, site, all that stuff. So actually the share link here goes to social media and Films on Demand uses the embed link thing. So you click on that. Here's this permalink we were talking about and then here's the embed code where you can choose whether you want it to be small, medium, large, or a custom size. So notice here you can also segment, but again, you will have to be logged in. I am logged in right now, so if I just click on segment, I can put in the start time and end time and title and create the segment. So, you know, instead of making my students watch a 46-minute video about historic American cathedrals, I could just pick a portion of it for them to watch. So that's how to search in the catalog. Um, and that, you know, the same thing works for, you know, if you wanted other things online as well, like eBooks. Notice here there's 400 video um, eBooks on San Antonio missions um, or, you know, something around that. So you can use that as well. Um, so we talked about this a little bit, but um, if you, you know, have talked to your librarian, searched through all our stuff, and you're still like, I hate everything and I want to make my own, that is totally fine. Um, there are a lot of tools available for you at UNCG that um, you can do that. So, of course, there's screen recording and lecture capture. The kind of Cadillac of that is something called Camtasia, which that does cost money, but there are a lot of free things online. Um, you need to check with your ITC to see if it's click wrapped, um, but some things just off the top of my head, um, I honestly don't remember if it's click wrapped or not, but like Screencast O Matic, um, Canvas has its own tool in there that you can record, you know, your face, your webcam. Um, and that kind of stuff. So Canvas has a tool called Canvas Arc, which does link to YouTube, where you can put YouTube videos in there, and then your students can have a kind of interactive discussion around that. So that's something to try if you're interested in that um, with YouTube. Um, and then you have, of course, your subject librarian, but also your ITC that can help you with this kind of, if you're trying to create your own or, you know, play around with streaming, embedding, linking, and that kind of stuff. Um, and then Amy just says Screencast-O-Matic is ClickTrap, which is great because yeah, you can use it. So that's free. A lot of these free tools do have limitations, like you can only create about 15 minutes worth of um, screen recording. But, you know, for pedagogical reasons, we definitely, I would recommend to not make too long of videos anyway or use too long of videos. So, you know, if you're trying to do like a 30-minute lecture, you could kind of chunk it up into 10-minute um, clips or even 5-minute clips and that kind of stuff. So some tips and tricks about streaming video is to make sure that the video has accessible captions. We talked about that. Um, a lot of times there is this assumption about YouTube and Vimeo that everything is closed captioned, but that is not the case. Like to make something really truly closed captioned, you have to go in and kind of do the work, which a lot of people aren't doing. Um, it's just really good practice and also, you know, really the law that you provide this even if you don't have a, you know, visually or audio impaired student in your course. So um, we always recommend to check your links and embed code on a mobile device. A lot of students are using mobile devices, so to make sure it's working in that method, and off campus. So um, again, we talked about, you know, all these different proxy issues. So if you want, you're always welcome to email me, and I'm happy to check them um, in an off-campus way. What I typically do is just go on my phone and turn the wireless off, and then I make sure the proxies are working. So that's a little tip that you could try on your own, but also I thought I'm happy to help. Um, always have a plan, C, plan B for your videos in case materials are taken down. So the library, going through library resources, ideally, like, they'll be the most consistent because we pay all this money for these resources. But, you know, I can't control Canopy. I can't control Films on Demand. So, again, having a plan B, you know, like a text or something that you can provide them just in case is always recommended. If you are using YouTube or Vimeo or TED Talks, um, definitely have a plan B, especially with something like YouTube because a lot of times, um, due to copyright reasons or authorship or anything like that, YouTube could take their stuff down in the middle of the semester um, and that kind of thing. 
So um, speaking of copyright, um, we definitely recommend to practice good copyright practices in your courses in terms of video. Um, YouTube tries to follow copyright, but you know there's thousands and thousands and thousands, probably millions at this point, of video on YouTube, and they can't. It's hard for them to police that all the time. So you could maybe definitely find a pirated version of like a TV show, right, on YouTube. But a, it probably it might get taken down, you know, in the middle of the semester. And b, you know, that's kind of showing your students like, oh, it's okay to do this. So we definitely recommend to at least try to practice some um, good copyright for your students. So I've mentioned it before, but I'll mention it one more time. Um, always use your library liaison. We are subject experts, and we can like work with you on a more one-on-one -on -one basis to make sure your stuff is working well and that we're providing you the best stuff for your class and for your learning objectives and for your subject. Um, but if you are like going to teach online and you want to use a lot of stuff, we definitely recommend that you contact us as soon as possible. If we have to contact distributors about stuff, you know that can be really time-consuming and expensive. So we try to get to that in the summer if you're teaching in the fall, um, and in the fall if you're teaching in the spring. And that kind of thing. And the last thing is that um, we see a lot of times that it's really good to be flexible with your streaming titles. So what I mean by that is a lot of time an instructor will come and say, I absolutely have to use this film, let's say about the Holocaust. Um, we have a lot of different films about the Holocaust, but maybe we can't find you that one title, right? If you, you know, are willing to be flexible, we could provide you, you know, like a list of 20 different films about the Holocaust. Um, so it's, you know, it's good to kind of be open to other titles as well. If um, you uh, want to use a lot of stuff from Netflix, this is kind of a last minute note, um, you can, in an online course, ask your students to buy a subscription to Netflix, but you have to do it at the beginning. Because, you know, same with a textbook. You have to have it written into your syllabus that it's required for them to subscribe to Netflix for a semester. Um, and then from there, you can say, you know, I want you to watch, you know, X, Y, and Z on Netflix. Um, but again, you can't in the middle of the semester ask for that. Netflix doesn't really work with libraries and with universities, um, so that is the best method. I mean, I've had people ask me if, like, there's the library library could pay for a subscription to Netflix, they don't have any kind of service like that. So if you want your students to watch like a whole season of something that's available on Netflix, that is the way we recommend doing it, it's kind of building in like a textbook. But note that something like Digital Campus Swank does have a lot of TV shows at this point. So I know that was a lot in a short period, but that is the end. So now there are some time for questions. And I think, Francine, I did mute you, but if you want me to unmute me, just chat and I'll, I'll unmute you. Yeah, there you go. Hello? Yep, there you are. Okay, so um, in terms of embedding some, some streaming media into my course, would it be better to work with you directly or with Leah? I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out the best way. Probably Leah. Um, okay. Leah is your subject expert as well right. as, you know, versed in different streaming films. So that way she could, again, make sure you're kind of seeing all the different stuff. If it's if it's a non library, you know, um, resource that you're trying to embed in Canvas, I would try to go through your ITC. Which are, are you in nursing? I am. That's Joy, um Joy, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, yeah, that would be the two different things. But if it's a library resource, um we yeah. have a librarian role in Canvas mm -hmm. where we can go in and be your librarian in Canvas and we can do stuff. And again, I don't want to speak for Leah if she is, you know, feeling overwhelmed or whatever, I'm happy to help as well, and she can get me involved. Okay, but in terms of, um, so that's the library. There's another part, and I know Amy knows that I'm in the middle of doing this. Um, I do want to have more face-to-face -face with others, and I think it's, you said ARC or something like that? Yeah, that so, I mean, there's some okay. ITCs on here that are welcome to chime in if they want, but ARC is a tool through Canvas. Um, that we are currently piloting, but we've been piloting for a while, so hopefully it will stay. There's no guarantee, though. It is a pilot. But okay. you can um, turn it on in Canvas and link to YouTube videos, and it creates kind of like an interactive discussion around the videos. They can, like, post things at a time point, um, and I can pull it up um, and show you. Okay. That's definitely something I'm interested in. I also am trying to figure out what the best way to, and I don't want to take all the time, but no, um, the best way to, I have some international students. And they're not in my course, but they're in another person's course, actually, in Europe. And we're trying to coordinate this and still be able to have FERPA at some central place. I know her students can't come into Canvas, and I know my students can't go into her operating system, but we're trying to figure out how they could meet with some unique URLs, maybe YouTube URLs, ideas? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, YouTube would probably be the best way to make something accessible internationally. Right. Um, and um, if you're making the videos, you can upload it and put in different captions or transcripts. You can link the transcripts in the comment and that kind of thing. That's what I thought, um, yeah. And, like, I know I used to be an ITC as well. And, again, the ITCs are welcome to speak up. I don't want to um, speak for them. But um, when I was working as an ITC, we did work with an international course, and we used YouTube. The big thing, like, is that the course I was working on, it was an African course course and mm -hmm. they would lose access to internet so again to kind of like have a plan b right um, like pdfs for them for when they like the internet was out um and like they went on strike a lot <laughs> so okay. like you know we had to have like some plan b's of like sending them the documents through different methods right well we so, we're gonna, i'm gonna have a plan b because I, I have a feeling since this is sort of new i'm gonna have a few opt-outs so I'm going to have to have, you know, plan B in place for written discussions and otherwise. But yeah. thank you. And then, I mean, one thing that I did, and again, I would talk to Joy um, about this, is that for international um, courses, there is a, like, free Canvas that they don't have to have a UNCG login to oh. put things in. But again, talk to Joy about FERPA, you know, because you wouldn't want right. to be, like, at, you know, the UNCG students to be outside of the UNCG Canvas. And right. That kind of thing. Right. But um, okay. there is, that, that is what we use for our international course. Great. That I helped with. That might be helpful. I didn't know that. I'll talk to Joy. Thank you. Yeah, talk to Joy. Okay, great. So this is ARC. Um, and you can see here I, like, threw in some links. I think Leah and I were playing with it together. Um, but you can throw the um, recording into here, and then you see here that um, – it shows up in a kind of discussion format, and then your students can comment on it at different times, and it shows up down here. And um, so let me see. I think this is – so you can see, like, Leah commented at different times. And it shows up here that people can comment on the comments. Um, you can have um, insights, analytics of each student, like if they, like, bounce off at a certain time, closed captions, that kind of stuff. So it does not work with library resources, but I have shared my um, frustration with uh, Canvas <laughs> about it. But um, so maybe down the road it will. But for now, I mean, it is great in terms of using YouTube videos. Um, and you can also upload your own videos. So if you're creating, like, screen recordings or lecture capture, it does work. And again, I would work with your ITC on getting this set up. Um, I think typically the ITCs provide their own, you know, sessions and documentations on it. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Jane and Pam, you're welcome to you know, if you have any experience or want to say anything about it, that would work as well. But, yeah. Thanks. Thank you. I'm muting. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Are there any other questions from the ITCs, like your experience with um, streaming or issues you've had? We know it's not perfect, but we definitely, we have thousands and thousands of films through these services, so we definitely want you to use it and make it as easy for you guys as possible. Okay. I'm going to take your silences in that I just covered so much in 30 minutes. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so my email is on the screen. Um, so, um, and I'll, let me share this presentation, and I'll put it on the um, webinar guide. But let me share this with you guys since you're in the session. Um, and this does have the links to a lot of the things, like the catalog, um, the streaming guide that I went over, and that kind of stuff. And the big thing, too, is, like I said, is that we do have these, you know, very subject-specific librarians that we do, we do want to help you. So let us know how we can help. And, um, yeah, this is the end. So I hope everyone has a great week. Um, I'm off to Texas, so this might not get on the guide right away, but I will email with a follow-up at some point and let you guys know. But I hope everyone has a really good week, and thank you for coming. Thank you, Sam. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks.